There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of pigs shooting down brothers on the instant replay. There will be no pictures of Whitney Young being run out of Harlem on the rail with a brand new process. There will be no slow motion or still life of Roy Wilkins strolling through Watts in a red, black, and green liberation jumpsuit that he has been saving for just the proper... Okay. Gil Scott Heron, the revolution will not be televised here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, the war and peace report broadcasting on over 700 stations around the country on Pacific and NPR and low-power FM and college and community radio stations on public access TV, like right here in Aspen, Colorado, on Grassroots TV, where we're broadcasting live today, uh, as well as on PBS stations and both TV satellite networks. Networks, Dish Network, Channel 9415, Free Speech TV, uh, 9410 Link TV, and on Direct TV, Channel 375, and we're video and audio podcasting at democracynow.org. Our headlines are also available in Spanish for any radio station to take, as about 200 stations are. I'm Amy Goodman. We're here in Aspen, Colorado. Yesterday, Barack Obama pledged to expand a controversial White House program that funnels federal money to religious charities. The presumptive Democratic nominee unveiled his plan in a speech on Tuesday at the East Side Community Ministry in Zanesville, Ohio. The fact is, the challenges we face today, from saving our planet to ending poverty, are simply too big for government to solve alone. We need an all-hands-on-deck approach. I'm not saying that faith-based groups are an alternative to government or secular nonprofits, and I'm not saying that they're somehow better at lifting people up. What I am saying is that we all have to work together. Christian and Jew, Hindu and Muslim, believer and non-believer alike to meet the challenges of the 21st century. And President Bush came into office with a rally, uh, or, or a promise to rally the armies of compassion, establishing a new office of faith-based and community initiatives. Uh, what we saw uh, over the last eight years is that the office has never fully uh, completed its mission or fulfilled its promise. Support for social services to the poor and the needy have consistently been underfunded. And rather than promoting the cause of all faith-based organizations, former officials in the office have described how, at times, it was used to promote partisan interests. Well, I still believe that it's a good idea to have a partnership between the White House and grassroots groups, both faith-based and secular. But it has to be a real partnership, not a photo op. And that's what it will be when I'm president. I'll establish a new Council for Faith, Faith, and Neighborhood Partnerships. The new name will reflect a new commitment. This council will not just be another name on the White House organizational chart. It will be a critical part of my administration. Barack Obama said he would set aside more than $500 million a year for the program. The Los Angeles Times reports many Democrats say it's the most aggressive outreach to religious voters ever by the party's presidential nominee. Religion's been a controversial subject with Barack Obama during his campaign. He quit his church after comments by his longtime pastor, the Reverend Jeremiah Wright. He's tried to quash false reports. He's Muslim. The Reverend Jim Wallace is the founder and president of Sojourners, the largest network of progressive Christians in the United States. He's the author of a number of books. His latest is called The Great Awakening, Reviving Faith and Politics in a Post-Religious Right America. He joins us here in Aspen. Welcome to Democracy Now! Hi, Before I I ask you specifically about what Barack Obama said yesterday. Uh, talk about your long-time relationship with Barack Obama. How did you first meet? What do you mean religion is a controversial subject? <laughs> I've known Barack for 10 years when he was a lonely state senator back in Illinois. Uh, and uh, we used to have these conversations about um, we were both progressive in our faith and we were out and the religious right was in at that point so we talked about how that we didn't think that uh, you know uh, tax cuts uh, capital gains tax cuts and endless wars overseas would be Jesus first priority you know so we had this conversation about faith and politics we also talked about how left and right were or the liberal conservative debate was was blocking our solving problems and we talked we were both older parents with young kids so we talked about raising our kids. So I, we've been having a conversation for about a decade. Mm -hmm. And what <clears throat> have you advised him? Well, uh, we just kind of talk about stuff. So uh, it's not, I'm not a formal advisor, but we just talk about stuff. Um, you know, it's funny how the press is seeing this as a religious outreach. That's the whole spin. Well, Barack was a community organizer in the South Side of Chicago. Uh, working with congregations, so this stuff's in him. It's sort of his 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 background, 
and he doesn't come from a religious family, and he knows. I always say that you know religion has no monopoly on morality. I want to say that over and over again. He knows that he comes from a family it was deeply moral, but wasn't religious. Uh, yet he had a conversion. He he became a person of faith, and he saw the difference that this can make at the grassroots level. So he wants to you know have have his faith inform his moral compass, but in a way that's consistent with democracy and pluralism and diversity. Uh, we're not a Judeo-Christian nation anymore. There are more Muslims and Presbyterians, but don't tell the Presbyterians. They haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> um, can you talk about his own uh, religious awakening, Barack Obama's, as you understand it, having talked to him a great deal? Well, he, he gave a speech at our conference two years ago, in 2006, at the Sojourners called a conference, and he talked about, you know, uh, he came to a place of really, you know, giving his life to God, as he put it. But I like the way he said that didn't eliminate doubt for me. Um, you know, you know, religion is either it either leads us to a easy certainty or a deeper reflection, and we've had a lot of the former for a long time now, a very deep certainty that uh, this is this, this is a Christian war in Iraq and all the rest. And I think it's better when it leads to a deeper reflection and maybe some humility, maybe more like Lincoln than George W. Bush. And I think he's got that kind of faith. It's personal, it's real, but he doesn't see that making him better or different than other people. It's something that informs his leadership, his vision of life. But uh, as you said yesterday, uh, we need all hands on deck, and whether they're religious or not. And what does that mean? And what is your assessment of what he has put forward? Well, you know, I was I was uh, uh, supportive always of partnership between public and civil society. The Bush administration, though, did this in a way that I think uh, uh, was uh, problematic. For example, they uh, it became very partisan, very politically partisan. Only the groups that were supportive of them seemed to get the uh, the money. And, and I think from the start, this was kind of a substitute for sound